Good evening, everybody. I am Love Coach Scott K. Thomas, and this is Straight Talk. Um, and we're changing our name, by the way. We'll tell you a little bit about that. We're very excited. Um, but it is uh, our final few episodes of Straight Talk before we uh, start with our new title next year. And it's a really important episode tonight because we've got three experts who have dedicated a lot of time to studying anti-aging, our brain, and how we can operate at a really optimal level. Um, I want to welcome, I see a lot of our friends are with us. Um, wow, great. A lot of our regular friends are with us and some new friends. So uh, please let us know where you're from. So pop into the Zoom room, um, your geographic location. And of course, Eleanor Joy, one of our regulars from Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Welcome, Eleanor Joy. Um, we're also going to take a lot of questions tonight. Um, we are going to start with just some of the essential wisdom that I want to make sure that they share with us. Um, and then uh, we will be taking your questions. So put your questions in the chat box. Um, or you can also, we have a little Q&A. You'll notice in the chat you can click Q&A and you can put your questions there. Um, that's a little bit easier for Trish and I to track, um, but uh, we are definitely going to get to some of your questions tonight. And tonight it's uh, three remarkable people, but before we meet our doctors and our scientists, um, I just want to give a moment to my teaching partner, Trish, whom I love very much, and I'm very glad you're with us, Trish. Welcome. Welcome to... Friday night, straight talk, and I'm really excited to get into conversation with these really beautiful humans. I have lots of brain questions, <laughs> like lots. <laughs> so let's launch into that. Okay, great. Um, so I'm going to put the spotlight on Dr. Heather Santison, um, and she's only going to be able to be with us for the first part of the show, as she has a three-year-old daughter eagerly awaiting her mother to return. So let me tell you just briefly about Heather. Um, and a lot of you saw her because many of you, of course, watch Saturday Night Alive. Um, she's the founder and medical director of the Solsere Medical Clinic and also the creator of Marama, the first residential care facility for the elderly of its kind. Her passion is letting everyone know and breathe this in Alzheimer's is optional. It's not a death sentence. It doesn't have to happen. And she is dedicating her life to helping us understand that. And we're going to, of course, talk about that. Heather is the fortunate recipient of a grant to study 25 participants who are following her clinical approach to dementia. And the results of these are going to be published in 2022. And we sure once that happens, you're going to have her back on the show, hopefully, to talk about that. Heather, you were doing such wonderful work. I so enjoyed meeting you before. But for anybody who is new, and we do have some new people with us, tell us about the work you're doing, please. Yeah, thanks so much, Scott. So it's just such a privilege to be here and to get to work with the people I do. Really, my patients are such an inspiration. Just this week, we had a patient who, after three months, she had dedicated, really, she's the one dedicating her life to this, right? She had changed her diet. She committed to more exercise. She was managing her stressors in a different way. She was taking lots of supplements, including the one that we're going to talk about tonight, Quality of Mind. And she, um, I mean, the list is long. She was checking her ketones and making sure she was getting into ketosis, which we know is a great diet for the brain. And in three months, her MOCA score, which is a way that we get some information about what's going on in your brain and how well it's working, especially when people are starting to experience cognitive decline, her MOCA score had gone up by three points. In three months, what we typically expect for people who just go through, do what their neurologist tells them, which is essentially nothing, or they take Aricept or Namenda, the classic drugs that are given for cognitive impairment, they typically have three points of decline over the course of 12 months. So she got three points of improvement in three months. This is miraculous. And we're seeing this happen all the time in our clinic. And what we know is that it doesn't work for the people who don't do it. 
It also doesn't work for the people that don't know it's an option, right? If you don't know that you can change your diet, you can change your lifestyle, you can take some supplements and sometimes some medications like hormone replacement becomes a big part of this conversation, um, particularly for women who suffer more with cognitive decline and Alzheimer's. We want to be thinking about potentially replacing hormones as they go through menopause. And when we do all of this, when we take this comprehensive approach, we get pretty consistent results that people get better cognitive function. So when I say that Alzheimer's is optional, I don't mean to make anyone feel bad, right? Like there's a lot of this that we didn't know that we're still discovering right now, that we're still understanding. However, for people in, of my generation, people in their 30s, 40s, even 50s, I would say that right now, if you can take action, if you're noticing some sort of cognitive impairment, if you say to yourself, 10 years ago, I would have known that word. I would have been able to come up with that. I wouldn't have been losing my keys or my phone as often. If you're having that sort of experience, that early symptom, then now is the time to reach out to somebody um, like the doctors in my clinic or like a doctor that's been trained by Dr. Bredesen, who's been hosted on Scott's shows. Uh, anyone who's trained to do this work can give you very clear and effective guidance in getting your optimal cognitive function back. So for someone like myself, because you talked about, you know, 40s and 50s, I'm 65. I thank God am using mind and we're going to talk about that, I'm sure, in a moment. And I've been using it for a little over, I think, a year. When did you first send it to me, James? About a year ago, I think. Um, it's probably been a couple of years now with COVID. Now. Yeah. Um, and I use it like I'm supposed to. I take it four or five times, four or five days a week and then a couple of days off. Um, I'm doing pretty well. I have amazing memory of my client sessions. Um, it's amazing. My clients say, oh my God, you remember things that we forget. But I am struggling with names, um, especially names of actors or musicians. You know, like uh, I had trouble remembering Anthony Hopkins' name recently. And I'm picturing him and I'm picturing the movies and I can't get his name in my brain. What is that? And is that something that I can reverse either by continuing to take mind or changing my diet? So mine is definitely going to be helpful. Um, another thing that I tell people to do, most people don't want to hear it. In fact, I don't want to hear it, is if you're struggling with something, like if numbers feel intimidating or names feel intimidating or like the place where you're struggling, lean into that. That's the place where you need more support. And things like CNS Vital Signs um, or Brain HQ, these are both, uh, they have online platforms where you can go in and you can take tests. And those tests that you can also do the brain games and then you can track the change over time. So we use this with our study participants and our patients and the residents who live at Marama. We get them engaged in these, these online games and then we can see, okay, is it, is it ex, uh, executive function or is it social, spatial awareness sometimes is what the challenge is for somebody else or is it math? Is it, you know, complex systems? Is it, you know, they, they basically put them into all of these different categories. I'm not remembering exactly what they're called at the moment. I need to go back and do mine. Mm -hmm. um, but they, we can basically get more granular information about what parts of the brain or what types of thinking you're struggling with. And then what do we do? The prescription is to do more of that. Wherever you're struggling, do more of that. So I would challenge you to kind of play games in your brain um, with names. The other thing that we know, there's a woman, her name is Sarah McEwen. She was at the Pacific Brain Science Center, and she recently left to start a business of her own called Genius Gyms. And if you go to GeniusGyms.com, they're beta testing this really neat app. What she found in her research was that if you are teasing your, or excuse me, like kind of um exercising your brain at the same time that you are exercising so if you're working your body and you're working your mind at the same time you basically get exponential benefits in terms of your cognitive function so this i the idea here would be like you don't want to do the last couple of miles of a marathon where you're totally burnt out right but you would want to start exercising and then while you're exercising and your heart rate's up a little bit you would have a conversation where somebody was quizzing you about the names of actors and actresses and that that would then get you that benefit. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, go to a question from our audience, and then we're going to go to Trish. Um, and John Carter writes, this is not a question so much, but John writes, um, I could care less about the names of actors, movies, or any trivia. 
I am concerned about the facts relating to the work I do, and I even forget my grandchildren's names uh, because I'm in constant because I'm not in constant contact with them. So thank you, John. Yes, I feel a little embarrassed that it's my concern is not remembering Anthony Hopkins. Um, there is a question from Ken who writes, can you address folks oh. in their early 70s who definitely feel the difference? So, yeah, we see patients, um, you know, into their 90s and we have seen miraculous recovery there. Actually, at Marama, um, we started, I opened Marama March of 2020. So we literally opened our doors the week before the, I opened a nursing home the week before the world shut down. And in that, we um, were kind of going back and forth with a caregiver for a woman in New York who had a mocha of zero. This meant she was nonverbal. She really didn't have any of her faculties. Um, and I was concerned about bringing her on because I just didn't have that much confidence that we could really help her. Well, she moved in a year, like about a year later in January of 2021. She moved in almost a year ago now. And in this past year, she has started reading name tags. She spells her own name. If you ask her her name, she'll spell her name. She um, also has, she'll use very coherent, appropriate sentences. She is very thin and tends to run cold. So I rubbed her arm the other day. She said, oh, that feels so good. Her whole experience of the world, like she's not going back to work. Don't get me wrong, but her whole experience of the world, she is, when she first came to us, she would shake people's arms because she couldn't express herself. She couldn't tell us she was hot or cold or hungry or needed to use the bathroom. Now she can express herself. She can tell us what's going on. And so we are seeing that miracles happen all the time and we can't guarantee something like that. And as people age, of course, it's a little more challenging. We've accumulated more environmental toxins. We've accumulated more stressors. It's just a, cha a bigger challenge to reverse the disease process the more it has progressed. However, my message um, is there's still hope. There's, I will never tell anyone after what I've seen with this resident that there isn't hope for them, right? We are willing to try. And the other thing is it's so much easier to prevent than to reverse. We need to prove that we can reverse it so that we can inspire people to do the work, to make the effort, to change their diet, start exercising or keep exercising, prioritize sleep, all of the things that we know that help to support brain health. Uh, it helps to motivate people when we can say, look, you can do it. You can reverse this disease because prevention is just so much harder to prove um, and takes much longer. So uh, for people in their 70s, it's not worth giving up. Don't give up hope. And if you're 60, 50, 40, start now. Thank you for that, Heather. Um, I have some questions. So I've got multiple questions and I'm just gonna like and <laughs> give it to you. Okay, go for it. Um, I've had a lot of trauma in my life, a lot. And actually that's the thing that I mostly attribute my memory loss for. I am, I'm, I lose like, it's not that I miss pieces. I just, there's little things that I can't grasp it. And um, what I've noticed is that in my generation, we're the, the first the serious generation who literally grew up with screens and computers, like, like computer screens. And, and so I think that there's, I think there, I mean, those things are connected, but for a, a mid millennial, what would you advise for, for yeah, healthcare and brain care and Okay. Other than like staying, exercising and <laughs> taking my herbal supplements, but, but also just brain, brain juice. Yeah, such a good question. First, I want to address the trauma component. So one thing that we know, right, this is the whole argument, like torture doesn't work because when we're under stress, we can't remember. So high levels of cortisol doesn't, it helps us maybe get out of being chased by a bear, but it doesn't help us recall things. We need to be in a relaxed state. M many of us have probably experienced this. This is stage fright, right? You can't remember anything that you're supposed to say or do when you're under so much stress. And so um, the more that we can manage our stressors, the better, of course. And we all have stress. So it's not so much about, you know, can we get rid of, can we eliminate them all? But it's more about our processing of them, how we create peace in our lives. 
in, included in that conversation is kind of the conversation around early childhood trauma. And when there is early childhood trauma, my experience of those patients is that they're much more sensitive. They're more sensitive to environmental exposures like mold or heavy metals or chemical toxins. They're much more sen uh, sensitive to repeated traumas. Um, they're more likely to create inflammation in the brain if there's say a, a physical head trauma, like a snowboard accident or a car accident or something like that. And so for someone with early childhood trauma, I would recommend that they you know, work early before that you're noticing physical symptoms. It, it's so easy for that trauma to turn into physical symptoms that working with someone like Scott or yourself or somebody who helps you to, pro to process really in a healthy way, process those traumas so that you're more resilient, not more sensitive, that doing that work early on, I think is very, very beneficial. Um, then in terms of millennials and what they can do to help protect their brain. You know, we live in a relatively toxic world at this point. So avoiding the toxins that you can, we know that toxins directly impact brain function, cognitive function. And so avoiding things like genetically modified foods that are sprayed with Roundup, avoiding heavy metals and uh, fish, especially that is full of mercury. So uh, the ahi, like tuna, swordfish, shark, of course, all have very high levels of mercury and either having those measured with a doctor or just avoiding them, um, avoiding chemical toxins and like bleaches and the parabens and it's seeing things that are in cosmetics um, and cleaning products and in the home, plastics, uh, as much as possible drinking out of glass versus drinking out of plastic, um, drinking and eating, also not heating things in plastic or styrofoam. Those kinds of small decisions that you can make every day to eliminate plastic from your life means it's not going to be ingested by you and then not going to affect your, your toxic burden, your overall toxic burden. Um, there's so many directions to go here. There's so many lifestyle kind of foundational pieces. So the exercise is so important, right? This is blood flow. It also helps so much from a mental health perspective. One of the things that we know about dementia is that depression is sort of a precursor for dementia. So if you have de uh, depression in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you're more likely to end up with dementia later on. We also know that sleep, not prioritizing sleep, being sleep deprived in your 30s, 40s, and 50s can predispose you for dementia. So a lot of those just foundational life things um, around prioritizing sleep, exercise, good food, that is essential. If you're not doing those things, I wouldn't worry about spending a bunch of money on tests or supplements or all the other stuff. I love that. Um, I, I thank you for sharing the, the piece about um, depression being like a, a key precursor, is that what you said? Yeah, basically the, the memory center of the brain, the hippocampus and the emotional center of the brain, uh, the amygdala, both of them, there's so much overlap. And, um, and so it's very often that dementia and depression come together, not just because you can't remember, um, but because the chemistry of those parts of the brain, um, and Greg, please speak to this, you can probably have more scientific uh, you can point more to the science where I can see the people, like what I see in my mind is the people who come in and share their stories. And, um, and then of course there's science that backs this up, but there, when, when you have these long periods of depression, um, that really sets people up for dementia. The other thing is anxiety. So the anti-anxiety medications, the benzodiazepines, those are also connected to, um, talking about, or to, um, dementia later on in life, especially after decades of use, really the things like Xanax and Ambien, they're really only meant to be used very sparingly. Like uh, um, I encourage patients to keep their use to under four times per month and years and years of prolonged use of benzodiazepines can lead to cognitive decline. That was my next question. Thank you for answering that. I'm gonna come in for a moment then here. Um, and by the way, everybody, we will be hearing from Dr. Greg Kelly and James Schmachtenberger, but we only have Heather for a few more minutes. So that's where we're focusing with her and her amazing information. Um, Heather, somebody asked, what did you mean by leaning in when we were talking about not remembering names? What do you mean by leaning in? 
do more of it. <laughs> so I mean, I think what typically happens is if people are, say, um, not don't feel as good about math or names, what they'll do is they'll start creating these coping strategies, right? They'll have their partner do the math. They'll have their partner do the taxes. They'll have their partner figure out how much they owe on this or that. And they start doing workarounds or they're just like, all right, somebody charged me wrong. I'm not going to, I'm not going to deal with that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, or names, right. You just don't say them. You say hi, instead of hi, Scott, right. You just find these workarounds. And instead of doing that, what I would recommend, that's where I said, lean in, do more of it. So make the mistakes, make the errors, but challenge your brain to remember. Uh, some people will start making lists for the grocery store. I recommend not, don't do it. Try, make yourself remember, try to remember. And this is part of what Trish was mentioning. You know, when we all have a cell phone in our pocket, we have a calculator, we have, a, we have our list, we have everything right there. Challenge, challenge yourself to remember people's phone numbers. Challenge yourself to remember that list. And even if you maybe make it, don't look at it when you're in the grocery store until the very end, really make your brain work. It's like you're doing bicep curls for your brain whenever you do that. That is great advice. Thank you. That's really, really good. Okay, Heather, I want to take a look at a couple of your websites and then I'm going to bring on Greg briefly because I want to have you and Greg answer a question together. But tell us about this beautiful place. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah, Solcere is my clinic that is in San Diego. We're in North County, San Diego and Encinitas. And we offer, there are three uh, doctors here who are trained by Dr. Bredesen in his recode approach to reversing Alzheimer's. Um, that what you're showing there is um, that, oh, thank you. Yeah. So that's me. I am, have been trained by Dr. Bredesen. Um, Dr. Naylor has not. She sees more kiddos and she definitely helps kids with their, their cognitive function and um, with anxiety and depression and things that come up with kiddos. Dr. Sembi has been trained by Dr. Bredesen as well. She's RECODE certified and my partner here in the clinic. And then Dr. Valencia Porter, she actually used to be at the Chopra Center for about 12 years. She's RECODE certified. And when the Chopra Center left San Diego, she joined us. We feel very grateful to have her here. She's wonderful. And then this is our lovely, adorable, wonderful staff, Catherine. Catherine actually helps all of our study participants. And Julie is our vampire who uh, draws everyone's blood <laughs> and processes it. <laughs> So we have just this wonderful, lovely, lovely team. I'm so grateful for them. And uh, we primarily focus on mold and dementia, um, but we've got four doctors and most things we can help with if, if you're looking for a functional medicine integrative approach. Great. So we will put, um, is it best for people to call your clinic and schedule an appointment? Yep. Yeah. They'll talk to Jamie, who's our new patient coordinator. Great. And then tell us about your kind of passion project, uh, Marama. Yeah, Marama. So Marama, the word is a Maori word, the indigenous language of New Zealand, and it means moonlight and wisdom. And the way I see what we do at Marama is that we, it, we're that light guiding our residents towards that dawn of awakening. So that darkness of losing their memory, really losing themselves, our caregivers, um, and our activities coordinators, everyone there is in support of our residents doing everything they need to do all day long. They wake up and we take care of their supplements and medications. We feed them an organic ketogenic diet. And then all of their activities throughout the day are about just enhancing brain function. We've got red light therapies and saunas, contrast oxygen therapy, lots of engagement, social engagement, as well as... Um, engagement in terms of like we were talking about leaning into the things the brain hq and uh the cns vital signs and other things that help to really challenge the brain that's what we do all day long there and where's where's it located located in vista and we're expanding um the we're going to expand this current facility right now we're full uh but we're getting a wait list going so if you or one of your loved ones has interest but you're welcome to contact us um, and get on that wait list. But we're hoping to expand here in Southern California. And then the question we get most often is why isn't there one in my neighborhood? So the goal is to make sure that this kind of care is available to more people throughout the country. So is this kind of a, a 
conscious assisted living facility or do people come in for short periods of time to get better? Yeah, a little bit of both. So um, definitely what we would prefer is that people come earlier on in the disease process and they come and they learn. We have a chef who teaches cooking lessons. We send people home with a cookbook of what they can cook at home and also support them in transitioning back so that they can cre recreate kind of this Marama experience at home. Um, if we're early on in the process, then we can do that. Um, if we're later on in the process, then some people have elected to stay long term um, because not only do you get the cognitive benefits, um, most people have less of a fall risk because they're just physically stronger. They're spending more time getting exercise. They're not just parked in front of a TV, eating cake and cookies and ice cream and pasta and cereal all day. They're having a brain healthy diet. And so they have better mood, They're, they get off medications, their blood pressure is better, their diabetes resolves, um, and they're not as worried about falling. So some people are able to move home and live more independently. Other people just want to, we love them and we want them to stay and they want, they love us and they want to stay. And so that's fine too. Beautiful. Trish. Um, okay, here's a kind of a personal question, not for me. Um, I, I know a person whose father has temporal lobe epilepsy and he has this really interesting form of memory loss of amnesia that he, like he, he has like after, like at the point of the epileptic seizure, he now he has no recoll recollection and he spent years doing like exercise and, and studying and, and doing these things. Like he would flashcard his life so that he knew the people around him. And at this point, it's been years. Like I think it was about, maybe he was my age. He's now, and he's kind of like, he's kind of like, I just don't care. <laughs> he just doesn't care. And I'm wondering what would be, what would be helpful for him? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I'm not an expert in epilepsy and the sort of that, realm of disorders. I have, however, seen patients who have epileptic seizures and um, late stage Alzheimer's actually comes. Is, sometimes that's a manifestation of very late stage Alzheimer's. Uh, however, the one of the things I've seen work best for epileptic amnesia is getting the epilepsy under control, right? So um, taking those medications, even though sometimes they have side effects. It, my clinical experience has been when people find the right dose of the right medication, their memory does get better. Now, sometimes those patients, now not all, but stressful events trigger the epileptic seizures. So making sure that they kind of have a sense of what their triggers are and they're not pushing too hard and then getting that additional support, right? So of course, with any sort of complex chronic issue, with any sort of brain degenerative disease, what we want to do is reduce, really the goal is that every cell in the body works more optimally and works better. So we want to reduce the toxic burden, increase the nutrients, make sure there's plenty of robust building blocks so that our patients can be, you know, creating the neurotransmitters and having the fats that the brain is made up of and have all the signaling hormones. If we don't have the building blocks of that, then we start to be depleted and deficient. If we have too many stressors, then we don't have the capacity to respond whenever there's a little bit more asked of the system. So regardless of what the diagnosis is, that's always like the general goal is balance, right? Do we have enough of the things we need and not too much of the things that are hurting us? You're also talking about changing the entire system as well, like the system that we live in. Like who gets to prior, like who out there <laughs> who watching is, is able to prioritize sleep? I know I am because I, I've created my world the way that I've created it, where I don't start working until a certain time, but that it's a whole system that's, that's literally impressing stress on you in so many different ways, right? Sleep and work and family and obligation, like, like understand. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. That was just like a, a rant. No, I think Daniel, Daniel's the one to ask about that, right? Systemic change. I'm, I'm just doing what I can here. <laughs> well, that's where I'm at. So don't worry. Like you, you guys tell me and I'm going to go out in the world and do that work. <laughs> Thank you. Heather, before you leave, I have one last request and that is for you to introduce uh, Dr. Greg Kelly, because I don't know him, 
So I really can't give a, a great introduction, but you can. Would you be willing to do that? I would be honored. Oh, I love Greg. So I, every time I get the opportunity to talk to Greg, I learn so much. And, and sometimes it's just like 15 minutes or I'm dropping something off at his house. And I just get this incredible download of like the, all of the best and the latest in the science around whatever he's dug into. Um, he wrote a book called Shapeshift, which is wonderful. I haven't finished the entire thing, but I've read a lot of it and um, learned so much from it as well. It's uh, definitely worth a read. He's introduced me to um, mentors of mine who I rely heavily on in my clinical practice. He's a wealth of information um, and just one of the kindest, sweetest souls I've ever encountered. So this is Dr. Greg Kelly. What a lovely intro. Thank you so much, Heather. Heather it's such a privilege. Uh, We'll let you get to your daughter. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And I certainly hope you'll be back with us again soon. Same. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And we'll put your uh, contact information in the Zoom room. Thanks so much, Scott. Good Thanks. night. Hey, Greg. Well, thank you for, first of all, being patient and, and waiting for a little bit there. Um, and uh, welcome. Well, thank you for having me tonight, Scott and Trish. Well, now she mentioned um, your book, and so I quickly scrambled and I found it. Um, so I guess let's just go there. Tell us a little, little bit about Shapeshift. Um, okay, so I, I don't want to eat up a lot of time on this, but um, I was an officer in the Navy for most of my 20s, and I was in pretty good shape, cared about exercise and eating, so I got um, on both ships I was on but in charge of the people that struggled to meet the Navy's weight standards and exercise standards. And then when I got out of the Navy, became a naturopath, I you know, also saw people that struggled with weight. And late 90s, I won't name names, but this fairly influential figure in functional medicine um, decided to kind of criticize every diet book over a course of a week on his blog. And he started it with basically saying, you know, if you're not happy with your weight, it's simple, eat less and exercise more. And it was, um, I've never struggled with my weight. I'm was one of those naturally like, you know, fidgety, really thin kids. Um, but it, it's just not that simple. I mean, anyone that's worked or struggled with weight would know that, right? Like the, that conventional wisdom just doesn't work. So my book kind of was inspired by that, just feeling like, you know, people that struggle with weight get given so much bad advice and so much conventional wisdom that's flat out wrong. So my book um, was really inspired by that. So it goes into things like sleep and stress and um, toxins and all these other things that have a, a monumental impact on how much body fat our, our body chooses to defend, because that's what it boils down to. Weight, um, I think like the analogy would be the Christmas Carol character Scrooge. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he cared about money. So think of our fat cells as they care about fat. And in the Scrooge's case, what do you think would have happened if someone said, oh, you have more than enough money, we're just gonna take some. Do you think Scrooge would be okay with that? Probably not. Right, if anything, repeatedly doing that is gonna make him probably think, gee, I actually don't even have enough money. I better do everything I can to get even more. Right. And so that's kind of what dieting does. Dieting, especially if someone's really successful at it, teaches that Scrooge-like thing that's already holding on to fat that, geez, I don't, I might've been wrong about this. I might need even more than right. I used to think I needed. So that's like, why so people go up and down and up and down. Yeah. So, um, Neurohacker Collective, you know, we have our um, founder and CEO, James here with us tonight as well, was really <clears throat> founded in large part on bringing kind of a model of health called complexity science or of science called complexity science or complex system science to address problems. And um, one of the things in complex systems is this idea of networks. And so th think of like a, an individual ant is a pretty stupid organism. I mean, it can survive but it's not gonna really um, you know, do smart things by our standards. But a colony of ants is incredibly smart. Yeah. If they'll, they'll solve all kinds of real world problems, an individual ant would not be able to. So when you network things together, there's this intelligence that um, emerges, right? That's a complex system science idea. And 
fat cells would be an example, right? Like an individual fat cell is not particularly bright. It would figure out and solve the diet or the dieting thing would be able to overwhelm that, but you'd network, you know, the, the millions and millions of fat cells in our bodies together and forget about it, right? You're not taking on an individual ant, you're taking on the colony. So it's a really fascinating uh, analogy that really works for me. Right. And so then the immune system is another example of network intelligence and then our brain and nervous system, right? Neurons would be like the individual agents, like the ants of our, of our nervous system. And so, you know, my book really was trying to handle, like teach people a bit about complex system science in the, with the backdrop of weight and, you know, strategies they then could use to try to improve theirs. But it's, it's not about trying to take Scrooge's money away. It's trying to convince Scrooge he doesn't need to have so much money. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned our dear friend, James Schmachtenberger, and so I'm, I'm adding James here. Welcome, James. Thank you also for your patience and watching. And James is someone who's been a friend of mine for many, many years, um, and I've had the good fortune to watch him be very successful with multiple businesses. But talk about a passion project, Neurohacker Collective is James's, along with his brother Daniel, uh, and these amazing doctors and scientists they brought in. So James, maybe riffing on what we just learned from Greg, tell us a little bit about the very fact that you call it the Neurohacker Collective and how your formulations work in, in such a, a unique way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess first, thanks for having me again. It's uh, yeah. delightful to be here. And <clears throat> yeah, I think, you know, what with what Greg was sharing, you know, with Neurohacker, what we've done really uniquely is we've taken complex system science and applied it to the study of human physiology, which, you know, to the best of my knowledge is something that others aren't doing, though um, we hope that as we work to popularize that, it becomes more common in medicine because uh, as you really dive into the study of healthcare, you know, what becomes very evident is that most of medicine as it exists today is operating off of a pretty reductionist model. It's trying to take very complex disorders and reduce them to the smallest number of factors and then find a single intervention that will address that. And that's just not how physiology works. Like that works beautifully for um, acute traumas, right? You get into a car accident, you break a bone, modern medicine is phenomenal for that. But, you know, what we find is modern medicine actually doesn't have the ability to cure or really meaningfully treat any kind of complex disorders, so like autoimmune disorders, cancers, neurodegenerative things, because it's just operating off of the wrong scientific model. In order to be able to address complex topics, whether it's for supporting disease or more what our focus is, which is enhancing human capacity, you have to be able to take a much more complex approach and be able to understand an entirety of a system and how all the different parts of that system interface with each other and how those parts interface with different systems and not try to just move one or two particular biomarkers, but actually work to support the entire system being more functional and being able to essentially come into homeostasis and then increase resilience once you're already in a homeostatic state. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to bring uh, Greg back on for a second. So explain to me, um, because I started using this because you told me it's good stuff and I trust <laughs> you, right? So I've been using it now for whatever, a year or two. And what is true, the feedback I get is people don't know how at age 65 I do as much as I do. I don't drink coffee. Um, I don't even, I rarely have caffeinated anything. Um, and I basically have two full-time jobs. My Love Coach Academy, Love Coach Scott job, and then now hosting three online shows every weekend, which I've been doing since the pandemic began, which is around the same time I started on Mind. So what am I putting in my body every day? <laughs> Tell me about this and why does it work? So the... Um... I want to maybe give just some some basic understandings about the brain, but um, for the audience, so think I think of the brain's job one is making sure we're safe and we survive, right? So that's that's what it evolved to do, and to be able to do that, a huge part of what it does is predicting. So the what really gets the brain's attention is when something that it predicted 
something else occurs, mm. right? So a um, pattern disrupt. Right. Something um, otherwise, like think of the, um, like we, we all have this notion that we're seeing the world as it really is, but that's not what's happening, right? Like our eyes are taking in photons of light energy and then our brain is making sense of those. And it's making sense of those based on what it expects to be there, mm. right? And um, I don't know if you remember the viral video from years and years ago about the kids dribbling a basketball and you were told to count how many passes they made. Um, and uh, like when I did that, then it's okay. Now, did you see the man in the, the gorilla suit? Right, there's the a kids. man in a like, red suit running through the basketball court. Right, that's like our, my brain actually did what it was supposed to do, right? It was told what to predict and it was paying attention to something to, to do something. And... <clears throat> The, the other thing, um, it's called um, inattentional blindness, I think would be the word. But anyways, that, you know, so we don't ever perceive what's in the world around us where the brain's doing its best to make predictions. But to make predictions and do all this job at a most foundational level requires resources. You know, so uh, <clears throat> choline, to make the acetylcholine molecules we need to create um, plasticity. So like... One of the things going back to your one of your original questions for Heather, when I was like, oh, wait, I have something. I have something <laughs> is um, memory is a huge part. So acetylcholine in a simple sense for the audience, think of that as the brain releases that as a, a cue saying, hey, something's really important, right? And then a huge part of what the brain does is then pair that with relevance. Like this idea that, you know, it's important in the moment, but it's important enough to put resources into. So the story about memory and names, <clears throat> I was a rush chairman back in my wilder days, in um, uh, university days. And during that semester, it was part of my job to meet a lot of freshmen and ideally remember their names. So I rocked at names because my brain fundamentally understood this is really important and put the resources into it. And where now I could meet a new person shake their hand, say their name, five minutes later, like, what was their name? Mm. I, I've just met so many people in my life, many of them that passed through. My brain, I don't think, um, and I think fairly realizes, like, it's not important to put a lot into this, right? So a huge part, if we want to get better at something, is convincing the brain it's relevant. Mm. And so that's kind of, so like the, the 10,000 hour rule that you hear about once in a while, 10,000 hours without convincing the brain it's relevant is just 10,000 hours of doing something, right? So that's where terms like focus come in sometimes, right? It's, it's that pairing of like an activity with convincing the brain it's relevant. Mm -hmm. And a big part of the, the, what you held up in the bottle is I would think in its basic sense, resources that the brain will need more of to, hey, you know, neuroplasticity, acetylcholine, this is important to have the motivation to even get started on things, <laughs> to have the nutritional support to create that focus, right? So that we can um, pair the doing with the relevance. So what we see over and over in our customers and it, even in our personal lives is that people that take the Qualumine product invariably say like, wow, I've done way better in my, my job performance. I've got promoted or, you know, I'm doing better in school or, one of the things I noticed personally when I was first taking it, I was commuting about a, a 30 minute drive at the end of the day from my home, you know, south of where the office was at that point. And um, I'm not a commuter, I, like I'm much more of a walker and bicycler by nature, right? So I would, um, I think within about four to six weeks of taking Qualia Mind, notice that, wow, I have way more tolerance for traffic and for people you know, like not being the most gracious drivers on the road. And for them, you know, still having juice to go out and do trivia with my friends at a loud bar than I would have. So to me, that's what like a good uh, nootropic stack like Qualia Mind does. It gives you more resources to be your best self more of the time. And particularly later in the day when we've already used up a lot of the mental energy we might have had early in the day from, you know, sleep refreshing our brain. So I'm glad to see some questions are coming in. Um, and uh, from Dia, she asks, Dr. Greg, why do you use calcium carbonate for your beautiful qualia? 
I was told decades ago by naturopath Dr. Sheldon Deal uh, that firm of calcium is deleterious to our bodies, especially the reproductive system and organs. Please educate me. So the um, the calcium carbonate you'll see under other ingredients. So those are basically, those are things to make the manufacturing of the capsules possible. So there's trace amounts of that in the product and it's used almost what you'd think of as an anti-caking agent. Like some of these ingredients, it's hard to get them to flow through a manufacturing machine to be made into capsules. So I would agree on what that doctor told her. If you were taking, you know, 500 milligrams up to two grams of calcium carbonate, there's better calciums, but we're talking here like, you know, a couple milligrams at most and often not even that. We, we only give the, um, we put those on the label so that the manufacturer can use those if needed, but quite often they don't need much, if any. Great. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to bring James back on then. Sure. Uh, so, and, and Trish is still with us. So we'll be hearing more from Trish. So I've got an interesting question for both you guys, and maybe you'll lead it back to how this was put together. Um, I was working with a client today who uh, had a, a pretty similar problem that many of the clients I work with, which was reoccurring negative thoughts getting in the way of, pot, of, of a new life. Very specifically, he has a wonderful new relationship. She's very loving. She's very emotionally intelligent. She's very healthy. And it's really the first time in his life that he's been with, he's only had two big relationships in his life before, and they were both with women that were not so healthy and didn't treat him very well. Now he's with somebody who treats him beautifully, loves him, is wiser, more mature. But the the negative memories are coming in more than ever before now one thing that i often tell my clients is that the brain because it is wired for survival tends to remember painful encounters my understanding is five to 30 times greater than pleasurable encounters so we have to reinforce and do affirmations does taking quality of mind help us with the reprogramming of our brain, with changing the neural pathways. And I would imagine so, because it's the Neuro Hacker Collective. Um, so uh, we haven't talked about this before. I'm guessing there's a connection there. And if so, then I can really help sell this to my clients. Tell me tell me about what, what your response is to that. Do you want to start yeah, there, Greg, and then I'll jump yeah, in? So, so um, like one of the foundational things about the brain is it uses a lot of energy. So um, kind of the, the general like numbers you'll see quoted is the brain's about 2% of our body weight, but uses about 20% of our energy. So a lot of what the brain is trying to do is to conserve energy, mm -hmm. right? And so I'll ask a question and Scott, you let me know what you think the answer is. So if we had someone that was a master, you say pianist, right? Had, done 10,000 hours, you know, virtuoso versus someone that's just learning the piano, which one of those people when they're playing the piano is going to need a lot more brain energy? Well, the new one. Right. When, when we're trying to do something new or learning something new, there's a, a, a huge amount of energy and what we would see on a brain scan would like be circulation to those parts of the brain that are engaged. So one of the things that that bottle you held up was designed to do is make the brain have better resources to make more energy, right? So in my, like the reason I brought this in is change, changing anything, changing our behaviors, habits, the way we think about something, that's, a, that's more akin to the person trying to learn the piano than you already being a master at, you know, loving harmonious thoughts in a certain area or so, when we're trying to accomplish something new, something that's strenuous, my most simple story is the brain needs a lot more resources. And that's, you know, you really just held up re brain resources in a bottle. Beautiful. Yeah, that's a really good answer. Yeah, I mean, I think from, from sort of a physiological perspective, I think Greg mostly answered that. Um, one piece that I would add, though, from more of a psychological perspective is that Anytime we have some kind of intense emotion or recurring thought, 
you know, like the propensity is to want to move away from it or to avoid it. Um, and, and there are times where that's the appropriate thing, but oftentimes what's occurring is that there is some sense of wisdom in what's happening and the brain is actually trying to teach you or protect you. And where there's that kind of recurring, especially painful thoughts and challenges, you want to allow yourself to dive into it and look at what is this actually trying to teach you? What are, and, and not just looking at it at face value, but assuming that your sort of underlying psyche is there for your protection and for your benefit, what are the things that it's trying to highlight in your awareness that can move you in a different direction so that your life and your circumstances are actually changed and recurring thoughts no longer need to occur? So I, I like to take those kinds of opportunities and use them as sort of a guidepost for what to look at at a deeper perspective internally. And then if you pair that with having the right chemistry and the right brain support, then it just becomes that much easier, right? When the brain's actually working functionally and it has the ability to produce the amount of energy that it needs and produce the kinds of neurotransmitters it needs, it's just inherently easier to move through virtually anything. And tell us a little bit more then about what the construction of this, um, you know, you've, he's mentioned, you know, I love the, the analogy, but the ants, it's a brilliant analogy because we all know a colony of ants is remarkable. Um, so how are you using the colonization of, uh, of, of the product of, of what's in here to create a unique formulation? So, um, we could spend a lot of time on that, but the, the brain, um, Heather mentioned regions of the brains, like, you know, the amygdala, the hippocampus, but the, the kind of the newer way of thinking of the brains is more that it's network based, right? So that you have the attentional network and the default mode network, and you know, we could name a bunch of networks. And so those connect different regions of the brain together. So maybe a, a, a way of thinking of the brain would be, um, some parts of the brains would almost be like hub airports, like a Dallas or Chicago O'Hare that have a lot of traffic that goes through there. And then others are much smaller, air, like regional airports, right? There's not much traffic. Um, but one of the things that then ties, you know, a, a lot of the activity through these networks together, especially when it comes to what I would think of as thinking, right? Attention, focus, executive function, memory would be a, the combo of acetylcholine and dopamine those neurotransmitters like one of them as i mentioned is basically the flag hey this is important and then dopamine kind of encodes relevance through reward right so that combination and so really what we did did was do a, a lot of um understanding of those pathways and then doing things to support them um and i again this would be more of an analogy so the the acetylcholine pathway is almost like a big circular loop and there's different forms of choline that enter in, or you would see in that, that loop. And so what we did is we give a couple different sources of choline so that the loop will flow, if that makes sense. And then we'll add herbs because what helps traffic flow are enzymes in cascades. So we'll give then herbs like Salastris, which is in mind, it's a, an Ayurvedic herb that the, it would translate as intellect tree, the common name for it, that helps with two of the herbs in that acetylcholine loop and then um, using and recycling acetylcholine. So there's 28 ingredients, but they're in there in large part to do a couple of different things, support that acetylcholine pathway, the dopamine pathway, um, do enough to create what we would call arousal, right? So like alertness, because without alertness, you can't kind of get to these higher level things. And then um, quite a bit in there to support the membrane health because nerve, the brains are mostly fat, right? So things that support those fatty structures, because that's, that's where the receptors that um, pay attention to these neurotransmitter molecules are embedded. And then the last part is um, mitochondria, you know, the parts, the organisms in our cells that are a, a network. So within any given cell, there's hundreds to sometimes thousands of mitochondria. So, and there are another form of network intelligence. And there, there's some people that believe 
somehow, you know, the mitochondria in this cell are communicating with remote mitochondria networks all through our body. Um, and that maybe light or some, you know, form of energy transfer we don't even understand is how that communication happens. So another then piece of the puzzle and quality of mind is mitochondrial support. So mm -hmm. those would be the main areas that we really um, dove in heavy on and tried to solve for. Wow. Trish. So my, my best friend works at a hospital and um, she's seeing a lot of long COVID patients. And I don't know if you guys have enough time to have studied this because it's so new and um, but there's, there's this, like an aspect of brain fog and cognitive dysfunction that comes along with, or can come along with COVID. And I'm wondering if you can speak to just maybe if, if mine can help that, you know, like the, the cognitive functioning again, or if you, you guys have studied that or know any. So I don't have, I don't have any personal experience with our product and, you know, that that long COVID brain fog, but in brain fog can be caused by lots of things. And in other situations, mind has been really useful for people that I know. So what, what I would say, and Heather mentioned this, that we all tend to have weaker muscles when it comes to certain skills our brain is good at. So I tend to think of myself as having an above average memory, but maybe, you know, some of my social cognition skills could have been better type of thing, right? I have a, you know, a friend I've known since, you know, early school that he would say his memory is horrible. So when I take mine, I don't notice anything with my memory, but when he takes it, it's night and day for his memory. But I feel like then I'm a much more tolerant, better version of myself around other people when I take it. So what I've observed and what we tend to get feedback is that often mind helps different people in different ways depending on where the biggest need in their brain happens to be. Right. So, and then for like, just is there's in the kind of the nootropic community, there's this idea that your mileage may vary, you know, essentially meaning that because something works for Greg doesn't mean it's going to work the same way for Trish or even work at all for Trish. And so we just really recommend people self-experiment you know, like run the experiment, take something, whether it's our product or something else for their brain, long enough to give it a fair shake. And part of the reason that we have a lot of confidence that our product helps, you know, the majority of people. So we offer a money back guarantee for the people that it doesn't, in this case, maybe help with what they were trying to accomplish. The questions are flying in. Um, so I will get to everybody's questions as quickly as I can. Steve asks, will the supplements help clear biofilm and plaque in the brain? So I'm not aware of any evidence that we would have that I could say yes to that. So, um, so I don't know, but I, I know a lot of the cleanup for the brain happens at night during sleep. There, there's a, it's called the glymphatic system. And it like, you know, basically if you think about it in a, a simple sense, we've got a daytime physiology and a nighttime physiology. And a lot of the like detox, repair, healing happens at night. So um, the quality of mind is much more geared to be a day product, like you know, a start of your day. So it's not, it's not really designed for the, that reparative. Our quality of night would be much more yeah, something designed to support those nighttime functions. And I do happen to have a bottle of that right here. Um, James, you want to say something about it while I hold up the quality of night? Yeah, I was just going to add one thing to what Greg was sharing, which is, so yeah, I mean, when we designed the products, we weren't specifically trying to address biofilm or plaque in the brain. Um, but the nature of how we do product development, like I was starting to say earlier, is it, there's a very heavy focus on being able to bring systems into homeostasis and then be able to allow them to stay there. And typically with most types of disease states, what you're, what's occurring is there's some type of imbalance and the symptomology that is being experienced is the result of something being out of balance. Mm -hmm. And so by the nature of trying to bring systems into homeostasis, i.e. balance, um, it gives the body more capacity for self-regeneration. 
Um, so though it's not an area that we're specifically focused on, what I've seen in my own personal experience is the number of things that people benefit around when taking some of these products is pretty remarkable, even if it's not something that we specifically oriented for, just because of the fact that baseline functionality is increased. And when the body is in a healthier state, its capacity to heal is pretty extraordinary. Um, we've got a couple of questions from John Carter. Um, the first one probably was for Heather, but you might be able to uh, respond. He was wondering if biofield healing is part of the treatment program. Um, and then the other question is, he says, I'm confused about the content of Qualia Mind. It says serving size, seven vegetarian capsules, servings per container, 22, 28 day supply. Um, how many pills altogether? So um, we can definitely answer this second. I can't speak to Heather's like the totality of the protocol she has, but she um, it's very integrated. She like she's on the leading edge of doing lots of different um, modalities to support the people she's working with. So if, if it's you know if someone in the country is exploring something for the brain, it's a safe bet that Heather is aware of it and um, using it or figuring out whether it's worth using. Um, in, in terms of the dosing of qualia, so one of the truisms about complex systems is they're really smart and they're really like, it's actually the terms usually complex adaptive systems for living organisms, because what they're especially good at, at doing <laughs> is learning and adapting to things. So with um, nootropics, adaptogens, um, you know, like herbal adaptogens, it would be very common that natural practitioners would say like, you know, don't do this, like as an example, ashwagandha every day for a year, pulse it, like, you know, do it, take a vacation from it. You know, the same with, you know, people that are smart with coffee, right? They'll take a, um, like almost a, a week, I guess the, the, a good analogy maybe for your audience would be exercise, right? So if you just, you know, okay, I'm going to, lift weights and you just do the same exercise every day, every day, and don't build in like a deep training week or like breaks very quickly, you stop gaining from the exercise. And if you're not careful, the exercise, you may actually backslide. So we believe that same is true for a lot of nutrients, many more than most people think. So our recommendation for quality of mind is it's five days on two days off. The recommended dose is seven capsules a day, though many people would take less than that. They may feel like they get all the support they need at four capsules. Um, so the, the bottle, when it says a 28 day supply, that's assuming someone's taking seven capsules a day, five days on, four times a month. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Just to, uh, to add real quickly to that, in general, that's, how I think supplements should be taken. Um, it, now there are exceptions to that obviously if you're treating for something specific or you know there are certain supplements that are you know things that are just kind of regularly part of our diet. Uh, but as a general rule, anytime you're taking something potent, you want to have breaks from it so that you don't start to adapt to it or build tolerance. And it's just something that most companies don't really discuss. And I mean, there's a couple of reasons why that makes sense, right? You want to try to keep the instructions as simple as possible when you're giving them to large numbers of people. Um, right. We're, we're willing to spend a lot more effort on education than some companies are. Um, and then also from a profit perspective, the more of your thing that someone is taking, the better for the business. Um, so generally there's this orientation towards just, if it's good for you, take it all the time. Um, but it's actually sort of contrary to the science. The science essentially says for most forms of supplements, you're going to have an ideal scenario by taking them relatively consistently, but having enough breaks that you don't build up tolerance. Gigi, I'll get to your question in a moment, but here's one from O'Flaherty. Um, he or she writes, I'm a retired caregiver who worked for years with dementia residents. I now live with a girlfriend and her 86 year old mother. They are both on some antidepressant medications. Is there a problem interacting if they were to begin taking this product that you're offering? So we, in general, we um, don't do a lot with um, 
we're, we've been primarily a high performance company. So the biohacker space. So we don't have what I would say like robust data on taking any of our products with medications. Mm -hmm. So there, in my mind, if, if it was a patient I was working with and they were on a medication, what I would do is start with the lowest dose possible. Let's instead of, you know, jumping in the deep end of the pool and taking seven, let's start with one. We'll do five days. Let's see how you do. And then everything's good, good. Then, all right, let's the next week, let's take two, right? So again, getting back to that idea of your mileage may vary. Like we're very, you know, strong believers of salt. Like everything's an experiment of one, right? Yeah. So any recommendation I could make wouldn't even necessarily, you know, be a, right for that person. So for things when there's any doubt, I just think the most prudent thing is to do as low potency as possible and as gradual as possible. Okay. Um, kind of along those lines, um, Gigi writes, I never took all seven capsules. Uh, it was too strong. Um, she does ask, is qualia safe to take with blood thinners, heart medications, Lipitor, et cetera? Is there any document about contraindications with drugs. I would like to get my mom on this for her dementia, but when I took it, I did have nosebleeds. It seems to thin the blood. Yeah. There's um, a lot of, a lot of, um, like there's nothing in it that would be a strong, strong-ish blood thinner, but things like ginkgo, they're gonna have some mild um, anticoagulation effect in part, um, like in, in basically a pretty healthy way, but yes, there, it, when you start to get into drugs and our product, it, it it's, um, you know, I think that's when you really need a practitioner like Heather to give good guidance. I, I think it would almost be irresponsible for us to make any hard recommendations, you know, in a setting like this. Right. I can add a little bit there. Um, so, I mean, generally with all the supplements we're designing, we're trying to make them as broadly safe as possible. And we do take contraindications into effect. Um, and, you know, we can't take every possible contraindication into effect um, or combinations of contraindications, right? So there is definitely a relevance with any supplements so that people are taking to, you know, speak to the healthcare practitioner and actually make sure that they work. Um, but to support in that process, one of the things that we do that I haven't seen a lot of other companies in the space do is we actually put together a safety data sheet on each of our products. Um, and so as we're going through the development process, we're looking at all the sort of known literature around contraindications, either in terms of uh, diseases or medications. And if there are any, then that we're able to find and we'll identify them there. And so those documents can be helpful when going over something with your practitioner. Um, and we don't, we don't publish those on the website because they're pretty hyper-technical, but if you reach out to support, we have those available on all the products. Great, um, thank you. Um, Mary wanted to know um, who formulated the Qualia products, who chose the ingredients? Was it just Dr. Greg or were there others involved? Oh, yes. So, question. So, this so is, um, for Claudia right. Mind, it was very much um, Daniel Smachtenberger was um, very involved, and he's been involved in several, very involved in several of our other products. Um, but I would say I'm the I like we have a model of decision maker, consultant, advisor. So I, when it ultimately when it comes to choosing the final ingredients, I'm the decision maker. And we try to be, it's the idea of the collective, right? We try to make sure that we have some, you know, smart consultants and advisors. Great. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we go way deeper into research than is standard within the space. Um, you know, we've got, we have four full-time researchers, including Greg, that are part of the team. Um, and then in addition to that, we have about, I don't know, 35 or 40 uh, medical advisors that are part of our team they each have you know very deep specialties in their areas so it's our, our core team who does kind of all the fundamental research and formulation but then that's part of where this idea of the collective comes in is you know our aim was always to create the very best products that could exist within the categories that we were touching and that meant that we were going to 
invest heavily within the company, but we also wanted to make sure we had access to the very best specialists. And so it's really this collaborative effort where, you know, what our competency is largely is the ability to synthesize information. Um, and so we're not doing a lot of the fundamental research on individual ingredients as much as we're taking that from all the experts who have done it and then synthesizing it into a finished product. Um, and like Greg said, he's usually the one who's doing the final decisions on what goes in, but it's based on consultation of a lot of people and probably literally thousands of hours that goes into each product that we develop. Quite, quite a little ant colony you got going there. <laughs> Well, it's, um, you know, it's that idea, we is smarter than me, right? So yeah. there's been times where, you know, I'll, I'll have done a lot of the work, but then talk with Daniel Smartenberger and he's like, well, what about these ingredients? Have you thought about them? Or, you know, so it's, it, there's always, you know, um, other smart people that can contribute. So like we're, we're developing a stress product right now and we're fairly far along, but we have a call um, scheduled Monday morning with a, you know, um, Dan Stickler is his name. He's a really famous functional medical doctor, brilliant guy, because um, he wants to, you know, be able to make some suggestions and contributions. So, you know, we, that's, that's kind of how we um, go through the process. Beautiful. And then I think the last thing that makes us unique is once we kind of said, okay, we're going to do this stress formula before we would ever give it to you, Scott, or sell it to you know people <laughs> in the real world, we make enough to do a small study, mm -hmm. and we will you know, do a real world like and figure out does it actually do what we were hoping it would do. So with with night that you held up, that that final version was like version five, wow. right? Like we did quite a few small tests till we got to a point of saying, okay, this, this small test worked well, and then did, did a bigger test that proved it out. Beautiful. So tell us a little, a little bit about Knight. I, I just received it, to be very honest. So I've been using Mind for a long time. I've been using Immune, but Knight just arrived, so I can't share yet about it. But tell us a little bit about this product. Yeah, so, um, I mean, sleep issues are, you know, ubiquitous. And I think, have, if anything, just gotten worse with the, the stress that's, you know, people have been under over the last two years. But um, I think like most people, when they think of taking a supplement for sleep, it's like, oh, well, I want to go to bed a half hour to now, from now I'll, okay, I'll take these herbs or melatonin. And um, really I didn't like the, I guess like stepping back, traditional Chinese medicine wouldn't approach sleep like that. They would typically give, you know, like an individualized group of herbs for someone that they would take maybe two or three times a day. And um, so the way I think of it is what I mentioned earlier. We, we have a daytime physiology and sunrise is what sets that, the big environmental cue, eating to you know degree as well. And then we have an evening physiology. And the evening physiology should be you know, almost the flip side of the coin, you know, instead of like alerting dopamine, acetylcholine, it should be, you know, GABA and adenosine and these other things that allow our brain to toggle into a rest and rest, rest and restore mode. So what night was designed to do is take this around dinner, you know, three to four hours before you're going to bed and almost the way quality of mind would work to get your brain, you know, ready to start the day. Quality night is intended to get your brain ready to start the evening. And then the side effect of that for many of our users is they get better quality sleep. I'm gonna take it right now since it's around that time. Um, we've got a couple more questions that have come in. Um, uh, Suzanne writes, I have excess alpha and beta frequency in my brain causing OCD, would your product help? And thank you, Susan. That's a very, you know, beautiful and vulnerable question to ask. So thank you for that. I honestly don't have a great answer to that. I, I haven't ever worked with someone with that with our product. So I don't, I like to say, I don't know when I don't know. And this would be one of those times. No, thank James, you. do you have any experience? Yeah. Not really in a formal sense. I mean, I've definitely seen, I don't know, 
probably a dozen people or so at this point that have fairly strong OCD type propensities who have benefited significantly, but it's not something that we've specifically researched for. Um, so again, I think it would go back more to what I was saying earlier, just in terms of, you know, though that's not the specific intent, anytime you're bringing the brain into more balance, it's generally going to have more capacity to heal itself um, and more capacity to adapt to and support if there's something that is off, right? If somebody does have OCD or ADD or anything, the ability to compensate for that in progressively healthier ways. Ken is asking, are there main ingredients that you consider primary, uh, say bromelain or, and I don't know how to pronounce this, quercetin? Quercetin. Uh, quercetin. Um, so the way I think of it, so I, I think of there being like six main cognitive, like groups of cognitive skills. So we would call those cognitive domains. So I mentioned earlier, attention would be one. So in attention, you have things, terms like focus and processing speed. You have executive function, which would be your working memory. So kind of the, think of your ability to hold a phone number in your head while you're dialing the phone, right? like having something in memory while you're using it. Um, our ability to change our mind or take on someone else's you know, um, viewpoint, that's cognitive flexibility. That would be another executive function. And so executive functions, the grouping of all these higher level skills that in a general sense to succeed in a lot of jobs, like an executive, you would need to do well. And you have memory. So the ability to store things and retrieve them. You also have language skills, which it's, it's completely own thing. And then social cognition, which is that um, you know, empathy as an example, but theory of mind, there's a few other things that go in that bucket. And then the last one is visual processing speed so, or visual processing. So kind of spatial awareness, you know, catching things, throwing things, everything that goes on. And so when I think of like, is there like you know, a main ingredient? It's like a main ingredient for what? If it's well, like for the focus bucket, so yeah, there's like, you know, the coffee berry extract and there's theanine and there's, you know, the choline's really important for that bucket. If it's for, you know, learning and memory, then yeah, well, that's Celastris and Ginkgo and Bacopa. So it, it really just, there's a, there are collections or groups, or we would say stacks of ingredients that are put in there to do different jobs and support different, like, aspects of thinking right one one other thing i'll add to that because we, we get this question a lot right is there a primary ingredient and the answer essentially is no because to greg's point we're, we're not doing a thing right we're with any product we're generally trying to do a whole series of things um and so there are certain ingredients that are more or less focused on those particular mechanisms but then it's also not just about the individual ingredients it involves the synergy amongst the ingredients. And this is an area that we spend a lot of time studying that isn't a common area of study, though really should be, because you know, depending on which ingredients you're working with, as you put certain ones together, they can enhance the efficacy of each other. Or what's also common is that uh, they compete for the same absorption pathway, right? So you might take two or three different things that all absorb in a similar fashion. And essentially what happens is you're just getting really expensive urine because right? your body's not actually able to absorb it. Um, so when we're formulating, we're looking at you know, the mechanisms associated with each individual ingredient, but then we're also studying the synergistic effects of how those come together and where can we maximize efficacy and where can we steer away from any places where the synergistic effects are actually counter to one another. All right. Um, well, I have put a, a link into the chat box and somebody did ask, uh, why are these products so expensive? <laughs> um, is it a multi-level marketing company? And no, it is not a multi-level marketing company. Um, I will be transparent. Uh, Saturday Night Alive has become an affiliate. And so we do get a commission on products that are ordered uh, through, uh, through you seeing this on the show. Um, if you use the promo code SNA, Saturday Night Alive, uh, you get an extra 15% off, uh, and that's also how they can track that you came through us. So that's a win-win for you, it's a win for you, it's a win for us. So I do want to be honest about that. Um, and uh, I think they're expensive because, and I'll let you guys answer the question, but 
Yeah, I'm happy to speak to that. These are high level formulations. You know, they're very high level formulations. Um, and if you do use the link that I put in, um, I'll take you there just real quickly. Um, uh, that link will take you to kind of the shop qualia page and uh, right off the bat you get 50% off um, and then you put in our code and you get another 15% off to get started so you know you go to that link that I just sent you put in your email address and that'll take you to their site and then you can you know decide where to go so right off the bat you're getting a nice discount um, uh, I have already subscribed. Let me in. Let me in. How can I get there? Um, you can hit the checkbox in the upper right. It'll... Uh, upper right. Ah, got it. Okay. There we go. So this takes you in. Now, we've talked a lot about mind, but we haven't talked about life. So tell us a little bit about life since that's, I know, um, a signature product for you. Yeah. Well, I guess before we do that, I'm happy to answer the question on price because I think it is a relevant right. one. Right, um, right, right. And I know it's probably on a lot of people's minds because without question, our products are more than standard. Um, and th there's a few key reasons for this. For one, like if you look at our ingredient label and you compare it to most everything else that's out there, one of the things you'll notice is we have a lot more ingredients. Right? The This complex approach we take where we're trying to address many different mechanisms and pathways simultaneously, inherently sort of calls for a larger number of ingredients. And then when we're choosing an ingredient, we're actually using full therapeutic dosages. And that is often not that common. Um, in like a one or two ingredient supplement, that's often the case. But when you do see ones that are more complex, what you'll actually see is they're often only using like 10 to 20% of what that ingredient was historically studied around. So though the ingredient has been shown to be effective for X, it was effective at 10 times the dose that you're getting. Um, so we're using a large number of ingredients and we're using full therapeutic doses. It's also why our capsule count is higher um, and that all ties into higher efficacy. But if, when you actually take a step back and you really look at it, what a lot of our customers have found is it actually either doesn't cost them more and sometimes cost them less when they start taking our products because it often replaces many other things that they're taking. So because of the comprehensive nature of how we're doing formulation, there's often many things included that are likely found in other things. So a lot of times people, like if they start taking mind, are able to cut out like a B complex that they're taking or multivitamins that they're taking, or you know, often even certain kinds of multi-minerals. And so when you start to account for those things, you actually find that it's significantly less. Because um, what I will say is, like within this sort of supplement industry, we have lower margins than is standard. Um, so though our prices are higher, it's not that we're actually just making more money. We're trying to provide a different level of quality and we're willing to do that at a lower margin because the primary focus here was improving quality of life, not maximizing the bottom line. Um, but it kind of goes to that age old adage, that you get what you pay for. Right? There is a qualitative difference and to actually do that just inherently costs more money. You know, I want to say for a minute, because I've known James and his brother Daniel, who started this company for well over 10 years, and they are genuinely two men who are dedicated to changing the planet um, and raising consciousness. Um, and it shows up in all aspects of their lives. I know them very well personally. Uh, I've gone to, I've watched them professionally. I know their relationships. And they're the real deal. These are, they're both really, really, really good guys. And uh, you can probably tell by who they attract, you know, Heather and Greg. Um, and I do know that they've never been about money. They've both always been about raising consciousness in the different fields that they work in. And they're both absolutely brilliant. Um, they're two of the most extraordinarily intelligent men that I've ever known. But the remarkable thing about James and his brother Daniel is that they're that smart and they're totally in their heart. It's, it's, you know, most people that smart are rely on their brains because that's, you know, their, their currency. But um, James and Daniel are always heart based as well as incredibly brilliant. And uh, that's why I've, they've been my friends for years because you guys all know me by now. I'm a heart guy. Um, 
I'm a compassion guy. In fact, James gave a TED talk on empathy, um, which on one of these shows, we should show at least excerpts of that. But I just want to, you know, check it out. Like the guy who's here because of the company he's created that makes these products, when he did a TED talk, it was on empathy. So um, very well, like their products, they are very well balanced human beings. Thank you, Scott. That's very kind. Yeah, well, it's true. It's true. Um, uh, Dia writes your products, and then we'll get back to the web page. But uh, she writes your products represent quantum, energetic, innate forces working in our magical human design that we are now blossoming into. I do not have enough words for my appreciation. This is good. Um, I was raised in the 40s, 50s, and 60s by a naturopathic chiropractic father who also had a value for osteopathy until the profession went with the AMA. So, wow, thank you. Um, and O'Flaherty writes, thank you for all of this and for your contribution to our better health. Beautiful, thank you, Dia, thank you, O'Flaherty. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly. Let's go, we're wrapping up. Um, tell us a little bit about quality of life because we haven't talked about that. Yeah. Um, so quality of life is our longevity focused product. And what, again, very complex product, a lot of ingredients, but where we essentially identified the five primary pathways that are associated with aging and then built a formula to be able to have meaningful increases in each of those pathways. Um, and essentially what we're actually doing here is improving health at the cellular level. Right. So one of the core pathways that we're working on is what's known as NAD. NAD is a molecule that is sort of the primary energy source for cells. And as people age, they start to produce progressively less and less of it and has a very close tie in with the aging process. But by being able to increase the amount of NAD that the body's producing, and then something that we're doing relatively uniquely is um, essentially closing the salvage pathway. So where oftentimes as people have more NAD, they'll sort of dump it, we're allowing it to be fully utilized. Um, but what that's doing is it's improving health at the most fundamental level, which is the cell. So that in turn then translates essentially to better health across all systems and towards reducing the effects of aging and being able to support more in the way of longevity. And then Greg, I don't know if you want to hop in and give any more detail, but that's kind of the, the high level of what we're doing with life. Yeah. So I, I think, um, as you said, like very much, this is a cellular energy product and a huge amount of the energy our cells make are made in the, these mitochondria that we talked about earlier. Right. So this is like, I almost would think of this as exercise for mitochondria. It's, it's really meant to give things that challenge them in ways that would make them decide, Hey, I need to be able to do more work. So you grow a more like powerful mitochondrial network in your cells. And when mitochondria work better, health shows up in a lot of different areas. So where mind was very brain focused and does have a mitochondrial element, this was meant to be more global to, to really help cells make energy all throughout the body. So um, you know, super cool product. Um, you know, we, I did, um, you know, two studies on it after we launched it in addition to what we did before it. And that NED that James mentioned, we it did a robust job at increasing that. We also had a, a, um, a device in our office called age meter that measures about 10 different biomarkers that um, worsen with age. And, you know, one of the things that we saw fairly, um, consistently, so I think it was in 10 out of the 14 people, is that one of the things you lose with hearing is your ability to hear high frequency tones. And it's generally assumed like once it's gone, you don't get it back. And over the course of those two months, people, like I said, about, I think it was 10 out of 14 people could hear higher frequency tones than they did at baseline. So beautiful, which thing. again, like you, you don't really think of it, but it's, you know, like, like little hairs almost in our ear that pick up these frequencies and it's mitochondria that are making those hairs be able to do work and then transduce that right so mitochondria eventually come into the story almost everywhere you would go in health 
I'm going to put the spotlight for a second on our beloved Trish, um, who uh, has been patient and actually has dinner plans that are, she's already late for. Um, but thank you, Trish, for being with us. Thank you to all three of you. I know that one's now missing, but thank you for bringing your wisdom and your kindness and your love and your commitment to loving other people. Like, this doesn't just... You don't just do this work and put time and energy and money and research into, into doing something for yourself, right? So thank you for, for putting that love into the world. Thank you. And yeah, thank you for having us. This was, this was a lot of fun and always a delight to get to share things that hopefully have the ability to help improve quality of life. That's you know, really why we built the company and what everyone there is quite devoted to. Mm. And I want to remind everybody that Trish has a wonderful show she does every Thursday morning. It's the Self Love Show. It's Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock uh, and you can catch it live on Facebook um, or go to the Facebook page, The Self Love Show with Trish and her partner Dawn. And it is a wonderful, wonderful show. Um, we're going to go back uh, just briefly. I want to go back to the Shop Qualia page and uh, again, just point out if you guys have missed it, how if you bundle these three products we talked about, life, mind and night, they all go together really well in the body and you can save $200 on your first order um, and probably more than that, actually, I guess if you had the 15% that um, so it's, it's even more than that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's a it's a great let's see $169 another 15% off of that so for about 150 bucks you can get all three bottles and get started on it and one thing I know is that they have a total 30 day money back guarantee no questions asked no okay. issues um, anything you want to say about that James I was just saying it's actually 100 days 100 days wow 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 so you know the your belief in the products is just so so obvious and so you know so clear um you know something that james mentioned kind of in passing but he talked about how um committed his company is to education and so if you do go to neurohacker.com there's a lot of other programs like this podcasts that dr heather does that dr greg kelly does there's a lot of really wonderful wisdom and information that you can get. So I really want to acknowledge all the work you do in educating people, including taking Friday night to be with us. Thank you. Yeah, no, and I appreciate you mentioning the the podcast. It's for people who are, you know, wanting to dive deeper into the study of health, definitely a great resource. Um, we've had, you know, phenomenal, phenomenal people, uh, Deepak Chopra, Bruce Lipton, et cetera. Um, and we actually have sort of two arms to our podcast, one that's focused on health and medicine. Um, and then about a year or so ago, we launched another one that's more focused on uh, sort of the future of civilization and how do you design healthier civilizations and healthier ways for humans to engage. Um, so both areas are ones that we try to dive deeply into and provide as much education around as we can. Well, I just got the ultimate compliment. Chi Chi writes, you're looking great, Scott, since you've been taking these supplements, it shows. So <laughs> that's like my 65 year old ego is very happy to, to read that. Um, well, I want to thank you guys. I do want to let people know about upcoming Global Peace Tribe events. Tomorrow night, of course, is Saturday Night Alive, um, our flagship show. And, you know, once every quarter, we collaborate with Teresa Collins and the Global Coherence Pulse. And tomorrow night is that show. And we're also collaborating with Jim Garrison. And he has an organization called Humanity Rising that does great work. So um, we've got Ben Bowler from World Unity Week and some wonderful musicians. I'm bringing back Honey of the Heart, who are two of my favorite musicians that we have on the show. So that's uh, going to be this Saturday night. So please do join us for that. And then on my Sacred Sunday show, um, you know, I, I meet people like we met tonight and I love having them uh, where I can go deep. And uh, 
A couple weeks ago, you met Reverend Deborah Moldau. She's the director of the Evolutionary Leaders Circle. Uh, she's a really amazing woman who has had a really fascinating life. And she's going to be my guest this Sunday. And that's Sunday at 10 o'clock. Then the last um, show I want to let everybody know about is going to be this show, Straight Talk, next week. Um, and we're going to be tackling, boy, talk about Straight Talk. It's going to be a very straight talk kind of show. I, as a coach, am so um, sad to see how many friendships, even marriages, are breaking up over different belief systems. And obviously, it's not just red versus blue, but it's vax versus anti-vax. And there is so much contradictory information and so many people breaking up friendships over different strategies to handle our circumstances. So we're gonna talk about this next week, not with the intention of taking one side or another, um, but rather how can we maintain our relationships? How can we honor our personal integrity? Because the people I know that really believe in getting vaxxed, most of them are very strong about it. And the people that are very anti-vax are very strong about it. So how can we talk about these differences where we don't fall into blaming, shaming, or judging of each other? And so I've invited um, three other real leaders in our world, Bruce Lyon, I'm sure James, you know Bruce, um, yeah. Michelle Anderson, and Larissa Stowe. And all of these people have radio shows, television shows, podcasts, they're workshop leaders, they're well-respected. Frankly, between the five of us, including Trisha and myself, two of us are vaxxed, three aren't, um, and we all respect each other. And we're going to talk about how we can stay true to ourselves, help educate each other, and remain open-minded. So that's going to be next week's show, and it's going to be dynamic and very important. So I encourage all of you to please join us for that. All right. Well, thanks again, gentlemen, uh, for giving so much to our world and so much tonight to Straight Talk. I also want to thank everybody for joining us in the Zoom room. And most of all, I want to thank those of you who watch. You know, the statistics show that actually 90% of the people who watch the show watch the replay, either on Facebook or in our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching the replay, I want to let you know that you can still get that free order. You can still get the discount. Uh, go to neurohacker.com and place that first order and then use the promo code of SNA, Saturday Night Alive, and that's an ongoing code. So even if you're watching this a week from now, two weeks from now, five years from now, it should still be working. So, Greg, James, thank you so much. Have a beautiful weekend, gentlemen. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank yep. you. Have a great night. Good night, everybody.